All right, here's 11. A pollster wishes to estimate the proportion of United States voters who favor capital punishment. How large a sample is needed in order to be 99% confident that the sample proportion will not differ from the true pop uh, proportion by more than 4%? Now, remember, for these sample size questions, you do have a formula that you can use. So let me go open up that uh, formula sheet real quick. And you guys will have access to this formula sheet uh, on your final exam, okay? So if I just open up that final and download that formula sheet, and this is the sample size formula. So let's uh, go find that. I think it's in chapter six. Oh, oops, right here. Yep, here. Look, there are two sample size formulas given in chapter six. One is to... Uh, find a minimum sample size to estimate population average mean. But what we were doing was we're trying to estimate this population proportion, right? So let me go ahead and take a screenshot of this, and I'll do the work on a separate sheet of paper for you, okay? So um, I'll open up a Word doc, a blank one. Now do a copy the formula in here. Where did that formula go? I think I just took a screenshot of it. Is that it? Oh, yes, that's it. So for number 10, 11, sorry, that is the formula you're going to have to use. Okay, so let's see if we have all the information. So P hat is the estimated sample proportion. Okay, sometimes you don't have this information. So if you don't have it, you must just go with 0.5. Okay, like 50-50 chance. Like if you don't have a preliminary estimate, then you just go with 0.50. Did they say they have a you know preliminary estimate? They don't. They never really said it, right? That 99% is the confidence level, and that 4% is the margin of error they want. So, and I think the formula sheet even explains it. Um, no, actually, you know what? They didn't. So this is something that you're going to have to know, okay? So I'll say that. If there is no preliminary estimate available, you, you, you will use 0.50 for p hat, okay? Like, we have no idea what it is, so we're just going to go ahead and say and there's a 50-50 chance, okay? Now, if p hat is 0.50, what is q hat? Now, p hat is the estimated um, probability of success or estimated proportion of people saying, yes, they favor capital punishment. So what is the probability of them saying, no, they don't support it? Um, that will be just a complement, right? Q hat is going to be another 50% because they add up to one together, right? 50%, 50%. So we know what those are. Now, the next one they actually gave us is E. They gave us that the desired margin of error, E, is 4%. So type in 0 0.04. Well, that was 4%. I'll say that this is 4% in decimal, okay? Now, I think the hardest part is really figuring out that the critical value Z is of C, okay? That's the, the critical value is Z, okay? So I'll go ahead and label this and I'll explain it to you how to find this, okay? Z, C. And that is not 0.99. In fact, the C, okay, we have to use the confidence level, 99%, to figure out what the critical value is, okay? All right. For this, we're going to have to use normal CDF, or I think this is going to be the inverse norm, okay? Um, on the other document that I typed up for you guys, uh, remember because there were two different final exam review documents, right? And on this document, uh, hold on, I need to log in with my... Um, Nova ID. One second. Just wanted to show you that I already went over how to do that in this document. So I remember that was question number 30, 31. All right, here's 31. So I did a very similar problem on this document, uh, number 30, um, and I showed you how to use this formula. And for this one, they wanted to use. Um, uh, estimate population mean, but the uh, but how I explain how to find this uh, critical value, like if you please could take a look at this page right here. Um, I'm explaining, um, you know, I took screenshots of it, how to find this critical value using inverse norm. 
Okay, so I want you to check that out. Um, and I will just go ahead and find that critical value over here for this problem. Okay, all right. So um, the confidence level is 0.99. That means we have 99%. I'll go ahead and type this. We have 99% in the middle and the rest, 1% to the left and right side, okay, and the right tails, okay. Um, inverse norm, the function that's called inverse norm in TI-84 takes area to the left of a, um, of a z-score, okay, okay, and then they will calculate what that z-score is. So if we tell them, hmm, if we ask them what kind of number has 80% of the area to the left of it, if we type in 0.80, they will find that z-score for us, okay? Now, if you have 99% in the middle and 1% equally divided in the left and the right tail, how much is in the left tail? How much is in the left tail? Remembering that in a normal distribution that is perfectly symmetric, all we have to do is take half of 1%, right? And half of 1% is 0.05%, right? A whoopsie daisy, 0.5%. So what's happening is to the left of this critical value Z, we have 0.5% plus 99% of area. Okay, now what's that in decimal? Okay, what's that in decimal? 0 0.05, 0.5% is 0 0.005, okay? 99% is 0 0.99, okay? So if you add them together, you get 0 0.995. It's actually much easier in, you know, stack crunch um, if you use normal calculator, but you just have to figure out the area to the left um, if you want to find that critical value Z using inverse norm and TI-84. So I hope you're okay with why I got this decimal 0.995 because that is the area to the left of this critical value. So take a look at the inverse norm function here. On my, on my calculator, I will go to second bars, but this time I will open up the third menu called inverse norm, okay? What I'm gonna tell them is that the area to the left of this critical value is 0.995, and everything else remains the same. Um, mean is zero, standard deviation is one. That's all you have to do. Go and hit paste and hit enter. The critical value that has this much area to the left is 2.5758, okay? Also, um, for two-sided or two-tailed test, okay, for confidence interval, um, it can be negative 2.5758 too, because it's in between that negative value and the positive value. But, you know, we just, for the simple size problem, you can just write that positive number down, 2.5758, okay? Um, I think for z-scores, you usually uh, round it to two decimal places. So I'm just going to go ahead and use that. Now, um, what I remember, when I was in undergrad, when I was majoring in statistics, I actually memorized these critical values for some of the, uh, the very common ones, okay? So if you want to just look up critical values for uh, confidence intervals, this kind of information is kind of just, it's, it's available, it's in your textbook too. For 95%, the critical value is 1.96. For 99%, look, what we found is 2.575, okay? So if you just wanna memorize a couple of these common ones, that's okay, because I don't think our formula sheet actually has those written down. So if you wanna use this facts, then you're gonna to have to probably just memorize it. But um, looking at how this Google is using three decimal places, I'll go ahead and, you know, just Change it to three decimal places too. 2.57, 2.575, okay? Now, but that's all we need to do. We just need to plug in these inputs into this formula to find the minimum sample size, okay? So I'll go ahead and do that on, a, on my calculator. I usually use Desmos, but just wanted to show you that we can do everything on a TI-84. So I will open, a, a, well, I will first type in 0 0.50 times 0 0.50, 0 0.50. 0.50 times 0.50. So look, this is what I typed in so far. And I'm going to draw parentheses. And I'll open up a fraction by hitting alpha y equals 
So this is what I got so far. On top of this fraction, let me put that critical value 2.575. I'm going to go to the bottom of the fraction and type in um, the desired margin of error, 0 0.04. Okay. And then I will close the parenthesis and raise that to the second power and square that. So look, I typed everything in and I'm going to hit enter. And it came out to be that number. You always have to round up. So when you round this up, minimum sample size required is 1037. And there could, there could be a, you know, a slight different than the multiple choice because of how we rounded this critical value. But we're going to go with the closest one. So let's go back to the, uh, the problem and see which one matches, which one is closest to what we got. So the answer that I want to find is 1037, and there we go. There's number 11. The answer is B, 1037. So let's check this answer real quick. Is number 11 really B? Number 11 is a B. Um, using the formula is not difficult. I think what makes this question difficult is finding this critical value using normal inverse norm function, or you're going to have to know how to read that from a you know, standard normal table okay, that will also be provided for you on the formula sheet. So if you don't like using that inverse norm function, you just have to look up that critical value in this, okay? But you will have to know that the area to the left of this critical value is 0.995. So what you do is you find 0.995 in the body of this table. So there is 0 0.995. 0 0.99. See, I'm trying very hard to find this number. Oh, here. Um, oh, here. 0.9949 and 0.9951. once so in between these two. So if you read to the left, um, the z-score is 2.5. And, you know, if you go up and the 100 decimal places point seven, in between 0 0.07 and 0 0.08, that's how you can read this critical value, 2.575. But I tend to just use uh, this inverse norm function and just type in the area to the left and then if I enter I will get that critical value. So that's probably the hardest part of this sample size problem uh, other than recognizing that there is a formula that you can use but that is it for question number 11 and this was one of the longer problem um, for me to go over but that's it for 11. I'll stop the video. I will come back and go over number 12 in another video.